What's going on, Fast Turn Radio watchers, listeners, replay catchers, gompers? What's up, man? All right. Hopefully, everybody is doing well tonight. I see we have Karen Holmes in the in the house, and we also have Don Berthium, who are both joining us live uh, in the chat room, and they are fresh off of the Skinner Monkey Cruise. It looked like everybody had an outstanding time. I am jealous that I could not be there, but uh, oh, Mike Damro, he was there too, and his wife Kim awesome people. Uh, so yeah, I was sorry I couldn't make it, but it just bad time of year for me. You know, I, I can't, the, the kids are in school, Angie's working, just no way to get away this time of year. So uh, hopefully everybody had a great time on the cruise. I know it looked like you did. There's another sea commerce cruise that's coming up and I'm sure that's going to be a blast as well. But man, monkeys know how to party, period. You know, if nothing else, we know how to have fun. And uh, that's how the whole monkey, Scanner Monkey group started, was just to have fun. And Jay has done a great job of perpetuating that throughout the, the years that he's been running the group and right on through the cruise and will continue to do so, I am sure. But since I cannot see in these silly little things, I'm going to take them off now. But shout out to Scanner Monkey and all the cruisers that were there. Awesome stuff. Got an exciting show tonight. I am sorry I was not here last week. It just... I was just, I didn't have a lot of content to bring you guys. I was kind of tired. It was just a bad day, bad night. I was like, forget it. But tonight is a great night and I am excited. After not seeing all of you for a week or, or two weeks now, I uh, got a lot of information to share with you. We've wrapped up the first month of the year. Can you guys believe it? We are one twelfth the way through the year. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about seasonal selling tonight. going to talk about... Uh, what you need to do going forward. We're going to take a look back at January, kind of see where things stand, at least for us in February compared to last February and just a lot of, a lot of numbers, a lot of stuff to cover. We're going to do some screen sharing uh, to show you those numbers. I haven't done that in a while. So, all right, we got somebody trying to tune in, I, I think. <laughs> They're on the phone. I don't think I can actually mute the phone. I don't know. Um, let me see if I can find them in the chat group real quick. See who is unmuted. I am not seeing anybody that is not muted other than the Gomp who has no audio whatsoever. So, all right. I don't know. We got some background noise. Hopefully it quiets down shortly because I can't do anything about it. I've tried to mute everybody. Ah. Looks like Coach came in with their mic on. All right, there we go. We got it now. Thank you, whoever uh, just muted their mic or did whatever. Background no noise is gone. We can keep going. All right, so we're going to talk about seasonal selling, going to share the screen, get into some numbers, uh, show you guys a little bit about how our January looked, how February is looking, and I'll get you updated on our spend as we closed out January because, as you know, this year, I'm taking a little different approach to my goal setting, which was we want to do a million dollars in sales. Typically, we run about a 2x uh, ratio or 2x sales to, to cost. So if we buy for 10, we're going to sell for 20. If we buy for 15, we're going to sell for 30. That's just kind of how we tend to, that's where our numbers tend to fall. So if we want to sell a million, we're roughly going to have to to buy half a million dollars worth of goods. So I kind of broke that down, rounded it off a little bit and came up with $40,000 a month is uh, $480,000 spend. Maybe I bump it up a little bit in, in uh, November, December, October, somewhere in there. And we, we reached the, the 500,000 mark and hopefully sell a million. So that's where it all came from. So I'll share all that good stuff. And like I said, I'm, I'm just pumped up for the show, guys. So thank you very much for being here. Oh, Mindy is here with us. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Assad is calling from a beautiful location. I'm not sure where Assad's at, but I believe it. <laughs> yes, it did sound like they were on a cruise. All right. So let me, uh, let me start with Valentine's Day because it is here. All right. The, I mean, we are about a week away from peak. Today is February 3rd. Seven days from now is going to put us at the 10th, and that's going to be a Wednesday. Uh, that'll, that means prime buyers will have their, their, uh, Valentine's stuff by Friday. If they order on Wednesday, the two day shipping, and then Valentine's of course is on a Sunday. So I'll actually be interested to see where the peak actually is, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday, but I expect it to be about seven or eight days from now when you see things just 
skyrocket. And you're starting to see some of it now, or you should be. Um, if you were, uh, if you've been following along the, with the products that you're selling, which hopefully you are, you've, you've been tracking them up to this point, you should see that those ranks are starting to come up where things maybe were 50,000 ranked. Uh, and a, a lot of what we're selling are fall into the toy category. So I'm going to refer to toys. Um, you know, if it was 50,000 a month ago, you should see that it's actually probably top 10,000 right now. If it's top 5,000, 10,000 right now, it's going to hit probably top 1,000. I was looking at a product about the same time last year that was ranked right around that, that 5,000 mark, and it ended up being almost a top 100. Ended up like 113 rank. So you are going to see these things skyrocket, but it's only like a two-day window where it is at its absolute highest velocity, and it's insane. So you should see the ranks coming up. Somebody asked, when do I drop price? Well, that's, that's a judgment call on your part, okay? I can tell you that the highest velocity has yet to come. We have, we have not seen the highest velocity by any stretch. You're going to be blown away if you hang on to those products, or even if you sell and still track those products, you are going to be blown away by the velocity and the increase in rank in, in the next seven days. What I can't tell you is how much supply is, is in the marketplace, and that's really what's going to drive the price. Velocity, is, the velocity does not drive the price. Supply does. Now, velocity will clear out the supply, and therefore, higher rank usually usually leads to higher prices, but not necessarily. If some jack monkey out there has 300 units and it's selling at peak 100 units a day, it's going to be whatever he puts the price at, you know, or she puts the price at. You're not going to be able to do anything about it. But if that person has 24 at a low price selling 100 a day, well, they're going to sell out maybe in the first uh, six hours of the day and you're going to have the next 18 to capitalize on it. So you know, just, I, I can't tell you that prices are going to go up by any means. No way. I don't know every product you're on. I don't know what the marketplace looks like. All I can tell you is velocity will definitely increase on anything that is Valentine specific over the next week. So know that if people are in short supply and they're the low ballers, it may come up, but you're also going to see things like what I did today. I started to lower some of my prices because I had a master I mean, don't, don't, don't misunderstand or misread that. Uh, like I sent things in that are selling for uh, $15 and I had them priced at 50 because I, I just had no interest in selling them until prices or, or until either their prices hit where I wanted, which I didn't expect 50, but you know, I'm looking at something that's maybe 15 going, yeah, it's going to hit 20, 25, maybe even 30. But I priced really high just so I could watch and, and not accidentally undersell my stuff. But today I looked at how much, inventory I have. And I looked at the selling price and made a judgment call that, yeah, I'm going to start getting rid of some of it and not dumping by any means. I'm still making, uh, the low end is about 60% ROI. And the majority of what I'm selling is at the 95 to 100% ROI. So these are not dumps by any means. I am just happy to take 100% ROI knowing that I have hundreds of units to get rid of. Um, so, you know, suddenly what my point is, you may see that low baller right now and go, oh, well, when he sells out those 24 units, I'm good. No, because you probably got some top tier uh, high ballers, <laughs> for lack of a better word, that are going to drop down and get in the race too at some point, because we all got to sell what we have in the next seven days. Valentine's Day stuff, while it will sell somewhat after Valentine's Day, for the most part, I mean, it's it's a window about that big. It's just, it's Valentine's day. And then that's it. It's, it's over. It just drops off. It is not a season. It is a day. Huge difference. So when do you start lowering prices? Depends how many you have, where the rank is at, where the price is at versus what you paid and where you're comfortable. But I told you to begin with, you need ice water in your veins. If you are going to do Valentine's day and get the most out of it. You have to be prepared to wait until the very, very, very last minute. And then everybody else is sold out because they got scared and you're the, the last man or woman standing and boom, the market is yours. The demand is still going to be there. You own it. Now you play that wrong and they still have more supply than, than there is demand at that last day or two. You're going to be sitting on inventory. Uh, 
I can't tell you how to do it. You just, you got to, you got to have a feel for what's going on. Hopefully you've been tracking this stuff the last few months and hopefully you see how many sellers there are and, and the popularity of the products and all that kind of stuff. So, all right. Uh, <laughs> B2 MFNK is back. So we're just going to call you B2. Uh, if you have consistent competitors, you can get to know their inventory stock levels and find the gaps along with know how they, they reprice. That's true. Uh, I have a lot of the same sellers on my stuff and luckily they, they're playing nice and we get along very well, or at least in my opinion, I've never talked to them, but we seem to be happy at the same sort of uh, margins and price range and we're matching. Nobody's, you know, we're not dropping by a penny and fighting over the, the junk. No, it's, it's there, man. It's, you know, I'm set, they're set. The other guy's set. We're all just taking our turns in the buy box, getting those uh, three to five sales a day and we're all happy doing it. So yeah, definitely, you know, kind of, kind of get to know your competition. Not we we are all competitors. You realize that, right? That, that we are all, there's 44 of us. That, wow. 44. I jumped up fast. Uh, there's 44 of us all sitting on this zoom together and you realize we are actually 100% competitors against each other, but somehow I don't mind sharing information with you. I enjoy sharing information with you. I hope it makes you a better seller. I hope it makes you money. Um, so, you know, look at those, those competitors, not as enemies, but as just other sellers, because that's all they are. Uh, we all want to make money. I, I guarantee you that nobody wants to lose money in this business. Uh, this topic applies to a lot of different sourcing models. Yes. Uh, those, those, where you source from is almost irrelevant. Um, not that you tend to run into people. Like if you do wholesale, you'll run into people that buy from the same supplier and you'll see those same names buying the wholesale stuff. But where you source from is really just where you get your products, how you price and how you set your repricer and all that is pretty consistent across the board. That's more of a selling metric than a sourcing method. Um, yeah. And Roy is saying we've had some good movement in the last few days. Yeah. We we've had some, some fantastic sellers and I, I learned this this year. This was, this was a new experience for me. I went much wider this year than I did last year. Last year I did a few little things here and there, tested the waters, didn't really know Valentine's day. And you'll see that when I show you the <laughs> our numbers from last year compared to this year. But, uh, you know, last year it was, here's a couple of these and a couple of those, and let's see how the market reacts. This year, it has been full on shotgun method, you know, putting out tons of, of different SKUs and um, I'm watching what's working and what's not. And not all, all of it's going to work. And some of it's going to be outstanding. And, and a lot of it's going to be in the middle. It's going to be, eh, it was okay. You know, it didn't lose your money. It didn't make you a lot of money. It was just all right. Some's going to lose and some is going to be an absolute, oh my God, home run. What I noticed by doing that this year compared to last year is when I had very few SKUs, I had to wait until a week from now for that stuff to move, or even maybe this week for that stuff to start moving. Where uh, with as wide as I've gone, I noticed that people were buying Valentine stuff uh, in January, you know, the last week of January, which I did not see the last year because I didn't have the right products. So now that I have some of the right products, I'm seeing that Valentine's is actually about a, a good solid three week period. Not, you know, and that's not peak, but if you have the right product, you're going to be able to sell that for three weeks. And uh, I'm going to run out of, of our best sellers probably in the next two to three days. And I'm not going to ever see peak. I'm not going to have, know how well it could have done. We're going to be out of stock, uh, which is unfortunate. And whether or not the other sellers have enough stock, I don't know. We'll have to, to see. I would, I hope that they do, but I'm not sure that they do. And uh, may never know how good it would have been. Other things, I'm probably going to have to recall 200 of them because it was a bad guess. <laughs> I read the data all wrong. So some good, some bad, but it's all part of the learning experience. The fact that there were Valentine sales in January was a big surprise to me. Uh, Connie says, yep, I underestimated how many bundles I would sell and they're almost gone. I sold for a really good profit too. Next year, I will do more. Absolutely, Connie. And guys, Seasonal selling. I cannot stress this enough. Seasons are not, it doesn't take 12 months to get back to where we are. You should be placing orders probably the beginning of January at the latest. And because we're going to be coming off Q4, it's a little tough to order Valentine stuff 
in December. I mean, if you, if you can make that shift that quick, that's awesome. I cannot. Um, so, you know, you're looking at early January. Well, we're already in February and we're going to be mid February by the time it's done. That's really only about what, 10 and a half months until we're ordering this same exact stuff again. So make notes. Michael Flanagan is, is awesome about keeping a notebook, tracking data, writing down SKUs and sales and all that kind of stuff. Um, I am not that good at it. I'm not organized enough for it, but I am smart enough to at least go back and look at prior year sales, look at the actual orders, the dates that the orders came in, pull up the reports that show how many of an ASIN sold and all that kind of stuff. And, and remember, of course, what your sources are for those products. Hopefully you know that. And just a second. Got a little bit of a cold that I'm fighting. So I, I apologize for that. Head mute for a second. Um, you know, hopefully you know your sources. I've, I've noticed that uh, Walmart carries the same stuff this year that they carried last year and will probably carry it again next year. So it's all going to come back around. Uh, make notes. Be ready next year. Use this year's testing. Next year you go deeper. The year after that you go even deeper. Uh, I talked to one of my suppliers about Easter stuff and they're out of Easter stuff already. I'm like how are you possibly out of Easter stuff? It's not even Valentine's Day. And they said, yeah, you know, I was trying to get 96 cases. Six units per case. I wanted 96 cases. I said, yeah, I need about 600 of these things because I see how they're selling and it's awesome. And it, yeah, I just want to nail it. And they said, yeah, we're out. <laughs> you know, they said, we, we have 20 cases left. I said, what in the world? So I took their last 20 cases, but they said, hey, if you want more next year, let us know. We can make a special order for you. That's huge. They said they, they I just tell them how many units and they're like, well, add it to our normal order. Okay, because, you know, I see that I need a lot of these. These are awesome. So that's uh, that's powerful stuff. I am going to uh, see it through and wait until till after Easter. And, and I know for a fact, just kind of like the, the sales velocity, figure out exactly how many I want, I want to order. But then, uh, yeah, I turn it into my supplier and they add me to the list, make special order. That's awesome stuff. But again, here we are in, um, you know, 2016, Valentine's Day, and I'm thinking 2017 Easter. That's that's a that's a big mindset shift for me. That's that has taken a lot to go from buy today, sell tomorrow, get it back in two weeks, and do it again, over and over and over. Which is the whole fast turn model. To okay, I've got a little bit bigger budget. I've got to start to plan ahead if I want to invest this money properly. I've got to get ahead of the curve. Which uh, Darla Flack taught me that probably almost two years ago now. And it has taken me this long, not that I didn't understand the concept, but it's taken me this long to be able to, to, to get the money and to be able to get ahead of that curve a little bit. And it is, it is powerful when you can start buying. Like right now, I am buying summer stuff. I'm stocking up on a lot of summer stuff. And I'm excited to have that summer stuff in place in February. Now, is that a fast turn? No, not at all. That's <laughs> not going to start selling until a little bit in April and really in May and June. But yeah, I'm buying it now. Why? Because I have a big budget. I know it's going to sell really well, but I've got to get it now. Otherwise, it's not going to be there in June. It's not going to be available. It's just not. So I have to make those buys now, knowing it's going to pay off down the road. Again, another big mindset chain, uh, shift, but it's what you have to do once you start growing. So I'm buying for summer already. Well, shoot you know, summer isn't here and suddenly it's going to be this time in, in the blink of an eye next year. So you just track all this data, guys. Track every holiday that you do. Seasonal selling, I'm telling you right now, is powerful, powerful stuff. Um, so track what you learn from Valentine's Day. Project, kind of take what you learn now and, and man, get on it. We're not too late for Easter. So start looking at Easter. We want to get on that Easter train immediately. If you haven't started buying, start buying now. It is still, you still have time, but it's got to happen like the next, in the next week. I mean, really, my suppliers are already out of some stuff. Understand that. People, now, if you're doing all right, different story. Uh, you know, Walmart is not going to be stocked with Easter stuff until after Valentine's Day and they clear out that seasonal section. And then, you know, it's going to be uh, Valentine's Day and chocolate or, or uh, Valentine cards and chocolates one day and Easter baskets the next. 
it's just the way it is. Um, and so, all right, you still have time, but if you're doing wholesale, you're going to have to get ahead of the curve. Uh, whew, been talking for 20 minutes straight. Holy mackerel. Not, mu not much going on in the chat room, though. You guys are quiet tonight. I guess, uh, am I boring you? Hopefully I'm not. Let's take a look at some of the numbers. Uh, let's see, get this pulled up real quick. Now, I will tell you this. Seller Central tells you that it doesn't like opera. Uh, <laughs> basking in your glow. <laughs> yeah, my forehead glow. Uh, yeah, so if you're going to do a lot of stuff in your Seller Central, I would not use the Opera browser. I would use, I talked about that in the pre-show, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, let's see, make sure I'm not giving away too much stuff. And I don't believe I am. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at the numbers. We'll share the screen, desktop two. All right, hopefully you guys can see my screen. If somebody could just say yes, that would be helpful. If not, I'm gonna, act. no, okay. Yes, 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 okay, Matt's just messing with me. Uh, lots of good info. All right, Harvey, what's up, man? Harvey's joining us, Matt Kelly, what's up? Yeah, Matt's a smart guy. If you guys ever get a chance to sit down and talk with Matt a little bit, do it. Uh, Mindy says he made a goal of doing $2 million this year, and someone pushed me into betting Betting, on, betting a cruise on making my goal. Wow, it's a big bet. I am not going for $2 million. Uh, It does not fit my business model too well at all. Uh, pushing it will be the million. Anyhow, all right, taking a look at the screen here. Um, Seven-day sales are finally bouncing back, and you'll see <laughs> just how, how uh, good that is compared to what it has been in just a second. Um, 15 day, 17,000, that's cool. And 30 day, 33,000. So we're over 30,000, 30 day again, which is all, all nice. Uh, every now and then I get stuck with an MF order. I hate MF, but sometimes it's just a necessary evil. But let's get into the business reports. So I do want to share this with you. Um, as you see, we're having a pretty solid day here, 2,500. So, you know, 9,000, uh, seven day, yeah a quarter of that, more than a quarter of that was just today. So the last six days before this, pretty, eh, you know, 1600 yesterday, not too bad. I'm, I'm happy with that. $47 ASP, that, that I'd take any day. That I love. Um, what you see right here at Toys, there's a lot of the, a lot of the Easter stuff doing, or Easter, uh, Valentine's stuff doing well. So, um, what I wanted to get to first is the, not the month to date, let's do custom. We're gonna do month to date, but we're gonna do a custom, because this is funny. All right, so February 1st, we're all the way to February 3rd, right? $5,850, not, not a bad start to the month, you know, almost $6,000, almost two, $2,000 a day for the first three days. Same time one year ago is $1,370. Right in three days, we were doing about four hundred dollars a day. Now, if we go to month to date for February, uh, okay, that's that's one I actually wanted to see. I didn't realize I had the wrong wrong selection. Uh, yeah, this month so far five thousand eight fifty. Last year, all of February, we did fourteen five. So we didn't do anything last year. All right, we we just we did horribly in in. Valentine or uh, in February, I did not do well with Valentine's at all, but I did just enough testing to set up this year's results, and it's been fantastic. And I expect this to grow tremendously over the next uh, the next week. Um, I expect two to three thousand dollars a day easily for the next week. Now, what the second half of of uh, February looks like, I'm not sure. That's that's kind of up in the air. It depends on what I find between now and then, but I think we have a very, very good week coming. I would be shocked if at this time next week, we are not past that 14.5 that we did all of last February. Let's take a look at the year to date, just to give you guys some idea of how this compares overall, this year to last year. And you see we're at 36,000 for the same time period last year, uh, 24.5. 
So, you know, we had a good year last year. We are not double that right now, but we may very well be by the end of February where, where we will have doubled sales over the first two months this year over last year. That's, that's what I'm hoping for because February was so poor last year. It was insane. And just to show you our January numbers all together, uh, you see we did 30,000 this past January versus 23,000 a year ago. So we were up a little bit. Um, <laughs> um, we're up a little bit in January, year over year. That's, that's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. We didn't work very hard. Uh, that was a lot of sell-off. Like these toys, not all of it, definitely, but a, a chunk of that was just leftover toys from Christmas that we probably sold at break even. Uh, there were some really great toys that I was able to source after Christmas that's in, in those numbers. Excuse me. But for the most part, I didn't work very much for about three weeks and still did 30,000. I'm happy. I, I really am. Not that those are great, oh my God, jaw-dropping numbers by any means. I just know how much work didn't go in to that 30,000. So very happy with uh, the way that turned out, or at least satisfied with it. Maybe not very happy, but satisfied with it. And this month is off to a great start, which is where I've really focused my energy. Okay, any questions about the, the numbers in January, February, any of that? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. I'm excited. I like where things are headed. All right, not seeing any questions. So let's stop the screen share and now you know what it's been so long so there we go stop share it's been so long I, I forgot how to stop the screen share you know i used to do that all the time i'm going to cut it back to probably just the end of the month and kind of recap and uh what i don't have up there and what i'm not going to put up there i don't really i think i'm going to stay save the spreadsheet just for the people in the coaching group i'll read it to you though uh our january spend ended up being Thirty-five thousand three eighty-eight ninety-five. So, um, so we spent thirty-five thousand in January. Again, that was on Valentine stuff. That was on Easter stuff. That was on summer stuff. That was on clearance stuff. That was just a mix of everything. We bought a little bit of everything, but a lot of it was projected ahead. A lot of that was meant to be further down the road kind of spending. Um. Matt says, what's your February goal? Man, I, I don't know. If it, all, if it all went perfectly, because I know how much I have there, in, in, a, in, a, in a perfect world, we could hit 100,000 in February. What am I really hoping for? Somewhere between probably 50 and 60. Uh, um, I, I really, if we don't do at least 50 and probably 60, I'll be pretty upset. That's, that's a fact. Um, just because I know how much work I put into it. And I, I, you know, we should be able to at least pull $2,000 a day. So <laughs> he said, okay, a hundred thousand is what I heard. Yeah, I, me too, man. Uh, I did. I said, uh, I wanted a hundred thousand. I wanted February to be a hundred thousand dollar non Q4 month. I, we did do 148,000 in December. So that was cool. That was our first ever six figure month. I wanted February to be there, but I don't know that it's going to happen. But with Matt's help, maybe it will, because Matt's awesome. And, you know, he does like 100000 by mid-month every month. It's just what he does. <laughs> the old Young Guns crew, man, they're, they're, they're tough to hang out with. But, man, it, it, they're a blast, and they motivate you. Okay, so B2 says, with spending more, what has become your new bottleneck? Uh, there's not really a bottleneck to this point other than just me not finding enough stuff. I haven't gotten out of the house as much, so I'm not doing as much RA as I had expected to. The RA, I'll break down some more numbers for you that I have here. Uh, running totals right now. Well, actually, let's get to, there we go. Uh, for the month of January, RA was about $9,600. OA was $3,600, and wholesale was $22,000. Now, I also had an online order for about $800 that got canceled. So I deleted that out. I was not happy about that because that was another almost thousand dollars on my spend. I was up over 36,000 and yeah, they canceled the order. What are you going to do? Uh, I spent a thousand dollars yesterday. They canceled the order. What are you going to do? 
you know, I, I came back and made smaller orders on some of that stuff. Some of it, it was just one time deal and it's gone. So yeah, I kind of bummed. OA, OA is tough. It, it, it's boring. <laughs> First and foremost, I don't like it. Uh, but it, it's also a crapshoot. You don't know if you're going to get what you ordered. And when it does come in, is it going to be in the condition that you expect it to be in? Or is it going to be beat up boxes and broken parts? Or is it going to be pristine condition? Like if you went to the store and pulled it off the shelf yourself? Um, no, no real bottleneck. It's just, I'm not used to spending $40,000 in a month. Uh, I, I, this is all new to me, honestly. It's, I've never tracked my spending. I couldn't have told you this time last year how much money I'd spent. I couldn't tell you it, what method I used, you know, what sourcing method I spent it on. Uh, now I'm starting to, to know that. And it's really kind of cool just to, to be able to look and go, oh, holy cow, I've spent two to one wholesale versus any other sourcing method or close to it. That's, that's kind of neat. I like that. So I'm, I'm really enjoying the whole spreadsheet. I'm not great at keeping up with it. Sometimes I, I get a day or two behind, but I make sure I go fill it in. Uh, all right. So goal proportion wholesale RA OA in February. No idea. Uh, I, I do not have a set. I am going to spend this much this way. I'll, I'll give you guys an example. I happened to talk to a wholesaler and a, a had an opportunity to make a buy. Now I did not contact this wholesaler going, Hey, I'm going to spend X amount of dollars with you because you're a wholesale and I need to spend X amount of dollars wholesale. Not at all. I contacted him and I said, I like this product that you have. How much of it do you, do you have on hand? And they came back and said, uh, about $16,000 worth. Cool. I like that. I really, I like that a lot because I'm looking at the product now, will I take down that whole 16,000 myself? Probably not. I will probably do a, a split buy on that. But that's just kind of a, an example of what was there. I'll tell you something else. I went to um, a, a chain store the other day and walked in, had no idea what to expect. Matt Kelly, I was talking to, to him on the phone prior to walking in. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I talked to him pr prior to walking in. He said, man, I, I just feel like it's it's full of gold right now. I said, well, we'll find out. I walked in. It took two days because I didn't take my trailer with me. But uh, in two days at that same store, I spent $2,500 a day. And really, that should have been a one-day buy had I taken my trailer. But I filled up the van. The whale was full. Floor to ceiling, front to back. Couldn't fit another thing in there. Talked to the, the manager, said, hey, I really like this product. I got 32 of them. He said, hey, we've got another half pallet in the overhead. I said, sweet. He said, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll have it ready for you tomorrow. I told him I was coming back. I said, I'm going to buy that and that and that. Uh, I just got to come back in my trailer. He said, I'll make sure that I got the pallet sitting on the floor for you. Cool. So I spent 2500 that day, went back the next day, took the trailer this time, another 2500 So $5,000 on an RA trip that I had no idea what I was getting into or what I would find. Walked into the same chain store across town and dropped, you ready for this? $138, yes, sure did. You just never know, man. You don't know what deals you're gonna find. So same store, different locations. One has $5,000 worth of gold sitting in it. The other one has $138,000 worth of, eh. And I, you know, if, if it weren't for the, uh, the ability to use self-checkout, because there was no way I was going to stand in line to buy $138 worth of crap, but self-checkout was available. So I was like, yeah, let me just buzz through here real quick. Um, it's the way it goes. So I am not going to sit down and go, well, for February, I have to spend this much wholesale and I have to spend this much RA and this much OA. It's not how I do things. And I am tracking what I do, but I don't project how I'm going to do it. So, um, it, uh, hopefully that answers your question, Amelia. Thank you. I, I appreciate the question. I just, that's my answer to it. I'm going to buy, and, and I learned this from Karen. KIB is awesome. Uh, another person that I have the honor and privilege of speaking to daily. And when I asked her probably a year ago or so, I said, KIB, how are you putting up the numbers you're putting up? What, what, what is your sourcing method? What is your plan? And she kept it very short and simple. And she said, I buy things when I find a good deal, I buy it. 
And I didn't quite understand that because I'm a fast turn guy, right? I am, hey, buying a, a, a good deal, but what if it doesn't sell for six or eight months, right? You know, that's, is it really a good deal? Well, now I'm starting to understand because I've got a bigger budget that you just buy those good deals when they come along. You don't really put yourself in a corner and say, well, I, that's a great RA opportunity, but I've already spent my RA budget for this month. Um, so I'm going to have to pass. No, that would be ridiculous. You, you take those opportunities and those deals as they come along and you don't go, Hey, I'm, I'm going to, I already spent 4,000 and this one's 5,000. It's out of my budget. No, you go, yeah, that's awesome. And when you have the money still sitting in the account so that you can spend wholesale and OA and RA and you got all this stuff. My, my biggest problem, honestly, is my $10,000 a day. My bank pointed this out to me, all right? My debit card has a $5,000 limit on it. And I, I run it as a credit card, but it is a debit card and I can only spend $5,000 a day. So I was, I was talking to my bank and they were like, well, you have a second card, which my wife has a business card as well. They're like, you have a $5,000 limit on each card. And, and uh, they said, so you, what you can do is if you're buying stuff, you know, from wholesalers, cause I explained to them my exact business and, and what problem I was having. They're like, well, instead of putting your wholesale orders on, on the same card as your RA, you know, when you're going out in the stores, they're like, why don't you put your wholesale on one card and put your RA on the other? I said, well, wow, that's a brilliant idea. So now I've kind of at least got access to 10,000, uh, you know, if I split it up, right. So that, that was a little bit of an issue as I got into a bigger budget, but, uh, that's been resolved for the most part. And I can always call them and get the, the, uh, limit increase for the day if I need to, but that's just, um, yeah, that's that's one of the problems I've run into doing these bigger buys and buying when it when it when the deal comes up. Matt says sounds like someone needs a credit card, not this guy. Thank you though, Matt. I know I, I'm leaving points behind in hotel rooms and all that good stuff. I know I just have to sleep in my paid for house. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. I borrow no money. Oh, all right. Um, so that's kind of the Valentine's. Hopefully, I covered Valentine's well enough. Um, <laughs> Matt said, I'll give you a $5 referral if you do. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I do want to talk to you guys that, so any, uh, any other questions about Valentine's? Cause we are coming to crunch time, ice water in the veins, hang on, use good judgment. I started some ads today. That's another thing I meant to throw out there. I started some ads, some of the stuff that hasn't sold or hasn't sold well. I'm like, Hey, let's, let's kick it in the butt a little bit. So if that stuff's not moving at all, maybe you need to run some ads, get in the buy box. Start, start getting products moving, but keep the ice water in the veins. A week from now, you will be going, thank goodness I held out on XYZ products, but make sure it's, you know, you're not tying up too much money if you guess wrong. Uh, real quick, hopefully you guys are doing some retirement planning. If you have started to, uh, if you, oh, wait, oh, all right. Amelia has one question. Hate when products become add-on. Do you have any tips? Not really. Uh, you know, once it becomes an add-on, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You can, of course, try to bundle or multi-pack if it's in health and personal care or if it's in grocery and you get permission from Amazon to create a, a multi-pack, then you can do that to try to get that product above add-on status. But once it goes to add-on, there's not a lot you can do except try to keep the price up. Uh, $10 used to be a pretty reliable line, um, <clears throat> but I've I've seen things that are four dollars that are prime uh, i've never seen anything above ten dollars that was add-on but i've been told that there are um so yeah not not a lot of great advice i don't mind buying add-on products if they're add-on products with great ranks when i buy them all right uh just so <laughs> real quick uh i want to touch on retirement plans just if you hadn't hadn't have not seen the link in Fast Turn Radio, I put it up today that my financial consultant sent to me. Starting to lose my voice. He sent the link to me because I was asking about, <clears throat> um, you know, I'm starting to make some pretty decent money. I uh, don't really want Uncle Sugar putting his hands too deep in my pockets. What can I do about it? And he sent me a link that explained from Fidelity, and I'm not endorsing Fidelity. Yes, it's who I use, but 
A lot of people swear by Vanguard, T. Rowe Price. I don't care who you go with. You can ask your own financial consultants about this kind of stuff. I just want you to start thinking. Uh, if you've got some some nice income and Uncle Sugar is going to come take 25, 30% of it, you may want to tuck some under the pillow uh, in the form of a SEP IRA, 401k, self-employed 401k. Somebody else brought up, this is not in that link, but somebody brought up a Roth 401k, which Roth 401k will not give you a tax advantage now if you invest in it, but what it will do is grow tax free. So you pay taxes on the money and invest it now, but it grows tax free. So when you withdraw it, assuming that it's been in there for five years and you are over the age of, I believe, 59 and a half, you will withdraw that money absolutely tax free, um, penalty free, all that kind of stuff. So whatever growth, it, it's, it grows tax free. Um, now, the other plans I was talking about, the SEP IRA, the traditional 401k, the self-employed 401k, a uh, uh, simple IRA, those are all going to be tax deferred, meaning you put the money in, you don't pay taxes on it now, but when you withdraw it, you pay taxes at that time. So there are advantages to both. Um, the, the nice thing about the SEP IRA is you can still set it up now for 2015. So is you have up until your filing time to actually open a SEP IRA and then you can invest. So that's probably what I'm going to do to try to get some money away from Uncle Sugar is open a SEP IRA, go stick some cash in there. That's going to lower my overall tax liability and, you know, save me a little bit of money for retirement down the road. Uh, Christine said, look into index funds. I, I have some. I have some funds. I have some different stuff. Anyway, I'm not going to, this is not going to turn into a financial hour because I'm not smart enough to really talk about it. But I want you guys to be aware of it and I want you to start thinking about it. Matt Kelly said he's personally going with the SEP IRA. If you have employees, I think that is probably the best answer in most of our cases. Just from what I talked with my consultant about and what I read for myself, if you don't have employees, then hey, a, a self or a, a um, so, what is it? The self-employed 401k is awesome. But if you're not the only employee, if you have employees, you can't do that. So anyway, just look into it, guys. I, I'm not here to give you the advice. I'm here to make you aware of the fact that, hey, a lot of us are starting to make a lot of money. Don't let the government take more than, than you have to. That's my personal opinion on the matter. But talk with your financial consultants, understand what your options are, make the best decision for you. Uh, the, the simple IRA is good, except the limit is about 12.5, I believe. So, you know, 12.5 may, if you made a decent amount of money last year, 12.5 may not be enough for you. With some of those other plans, you can go all the way up to about $53,000. That's a good chunk of money you're stacking away. If you need more than that, you're probably going to go into the 401k side of things. Anyway, go talk to a financial consultant. Understand that, yes, we are self-employed. There are advantages to that. Let's do it. Take advantage. Make sure you're getting the most out of it. Uh, Long-term storage fees are coming up, so make sure you're checking your inventory. Get into those reports. Look at the recommended removals and know that that's, that's where you're, you're that's what Amazon's telling you to take out the stuff that is in sellable. And they're saying, but you know, take out 20 of 21. That's because you do not get charged long-term storage fees on single units, but anything that has any SKU that has more than one, you will get charged long-term storage fees. So, so take a look at that this week. Uh, that's coming up on February 15th. And there's a little note in there for anybody creating their own product listings. Uh, there's a new rule that came in for seller activities that basically says, stop trying to dupe the customer. Do not tell them that you have, don't, don't use. And this was the perfect example. Uh, it was a question asking in a Facebook group. And they said, if I'm trying to sell generic paper towels, can I use bounty as one of my keywords? Now they were talking about a pay-per-click campaign which I did not find specifically, but what it does specifically say is do not use another brand's name in your keywords in a product listing. Now, personally, I'm not going to touch a, a 
when they say don't do it over here, I'm not going to say, but you didn't say not to do it over here. No, they said don't do it over here. I'm not doing it over there either. So when you create a listing, do not make one of your keywords bounty if you're selling knockoff paper towels. The, the problem is, and what Amazon sees as the problem, is when the customer searches bounty paper towels and your generic pops up, they don't really look at the listing. They don't read the title. They don't understand that it's knockoff. They think, I put in bounty paper towels. This listing came up. It must be bounty paper towels. And now you've just ripped off bounty. And Amazon is not happy about that. And you've just sold generics to a customer that expected to get the name brand stuff. So that has been updated. It's, it's a little note in Seller Central if you go look. You can click on it, read it for yourself, but do not try to mislead your customers through search and browse by using terms that are deemed uh, illegal, for lack of a better term, by Amazon. They said this is a violation of policy. Do not do it. And using brand names is one of them. There's a few other things. So I suggest you go read through that to get familiar with the new rules. Um, all right, Mindy said, by the way, since you are talking accounting, if someone wants to elect to be taxed as an S-Corp, deadline is in 12 days. Good to know. Yes, I, I am personally set up with an LLC with an S-Corp designation. I don't really know what any of that means. I just know that's what I am, and I don't have to pay self-employment tax on anything that is profited by the business. Now, I still pay it on my own personal draw or salary, whatever you want to call it. What I pay myself, I still have to pay self-employment tax, but whatever... I take from the business as, as profit sharing. I don't pay that 15%, so it will save you some, some money in the taxes. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mindy says, it means you pay less Social Security and Medicare tax, pretty much. Yeah, you don't pay as much in, in self-employment tax. Yes, which is the 15%, exactly, I, I, yeah. Um, all right, anything else? I'm sure there's stuff, because I had a whole list of things. Let me go look back at update on spending, retirement options. All right. There we go. All right. I was just looking back at my post to make sure that I didn't miss anything that was on my mind when I created the Zoom today. And I think that's pretty much all that I had to talk about. Um, Amelia says, in last video, you mentioned about going to start PL. Very happy for you. Ah, I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't not not private label all right it's very easy to assume that's that's what people are doing what i am doing this year is is creating a brand different than private label all right i am not going to china and bringing in products like like andy andy slammons is awesome at bringing in products from china okay that's cool i'm glad andy is great at that i am not what I want to do, though, is start to build a brand, my own website, which I don't expect to make you know a ton of money off of, and I'll probably lose money on it. You know, I'm paying people to set the whole thing up and to get SEO and, and to write copy and all that kind of stuff. I'll probably lose money on it. What I do like is the fact that I can start to create a brand that hopefully will be recognized on Amazon or through our website from our customers. And I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about with this, too. Um, bubble fast. All right. You guys know, I talk about bubble fast. I don't know. Yeah. These guys, ah! you didn't hear that. All right. Bubble fast. You guys know who I'm talking about. Uh, Mark, Mark and, uh, is it Mark? Is it Robin? God, I should know her name. That's awful. I've met her and I, I'm pretty sure that anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just losing my whole train of thought. Anyway, Mark does a great job, right? Runs bubble fast. Yes, Robin. Thank you, Mindy. Jeez, I'm losing it, man. Uh, <clears throat> so bubble fast sells on Amazon. And when I needed poly bags, when I first started, uh, started my FBA business, I needed poly bags. I went to Amazon. I looked through and I found this company offering uh, a, a four pack. They had a hundred of each of the four most popular sizes and I ordered it and it was from this company called bubble fast and it was merchant fulfilled. So it was kind of my assumption. Hey, if, if they have this product on Amazon and it's merchant fulfilled, 
Bubble Fast sounds like a company name. Let me go Google Bubble Fast. And I did, and sure enough, they have their own website. And I could order direct on their website. And since they, they uh, don't have to pay the 15% in Amazon fees, they can actually offer a little bit cheaper prices on their website and they offer free shipping. Now it comes in three days instead of two, but I can live with that. And that that's so what started as a purchase on Amazon because they were branded because the bags were branded because their store was branded. They had the name bubble fast that kind of stuck in my mind. I went and searched them out when I had to reorder and rather than reordering through Amazon, I went to their website and I got a better deal. And then I got to know Mark, and he said, hey, if you ever use, uh, you know, if you want to use the, the code fast turn, then or I, I actually came up with the code. But anyway, he said, if you want a, a code for your group, let me know. And I said, yeah, I'd like fast turn. He said, I'll give you a 5% discount. Okay, now it's a little cheaper than Amazon. Plus, I can order in, in larger quantities. They have quantities available on their website that are not available on Amazon. And I'm saving 5% on top of that. That's awesome. Now, I did come back last month and he said, hey, I'm going to bump it up to 10%. So now, good news, you guys can save 10%. Now, this is not a bubble fast commercial, by the way, but this is how things work out. And this is what's going on in my mind. All this took place because I've made a purchase on Amazon. And then I made a purchase on bubble fast. And I made more and more purchases and I met uh, Mark in person. And that was cool. Um, he's given the, the group some perks and you guys get to, to get some of the rewards, but it all started because they were smart enough. He was smart enough and, and Robin was smart enough to build a brand. And that's, that's all I'm looking for. This isn't a private label thing. What it is, I'm hoping it's, it turns more into, Hey, I bought it on Amazon. I recognize this name. I want to go find their website and I want to be able to provide that and, and have them not now now I don't necessarily compete with Amazon and, and 40 other sellers on the same product. Maybe I can get just a little slice of that traffic on my own site and they go, oh, I'm just going to shop your stuff because I know this is a quality product that, that I got from you and this was a quality product. So I'm going to try to, to shop directly through you instead of maybe on Amazon. Now, will it work out that way? I have no idea. I have no clue. But I'm going to throw a few hundred bucks at it, a few thousand, honestly between me and you and whoever else watches the replay. Uh, I'm putting a few thousand dollars into this just to, to see if it works. I want to be branded. If nothing else, maybe they click on my brand on Amazon. And now I'm not the lowest and I'm not fighting for the buy box, but maybe I start to get some customer loyalty. Right now, if you go to shop Dwayne on Amazon, that name is not going to stick out to you. It does not mean anything. There's no logo associated with it. There's no way you're going to go, oh my God, Shop Dwayne is awesome. No, not my store name, by the way. Gives you an idea though. I mean, that's just, I might as well be ABC store. It just, eh, nobody's going to remember it. But if I can build a brand and a logo and I can start to package things in my branded logo created packaging, that would be awesome because now that's just one more hurdle that people would have to go through or, um, you know, so it, it starts to drive away competition because, Hey, if you don't believe me, go look at, I think it's called the black tie mercantile or, or black box mercantile. Go, go look at their store. You know, they, they, all they do is take generic products that you and I can sell and they put it in their own little box, right? And that, that's all they do. And their whole store is filled with thousands of SKUs and it's all got this special little box that I'm not going to take the time to fight with them on their crap. I'm just going to go create my own listing or do whatever. And they've done a good job of kind of carving out the niche. So it's kind of a two part play. None of it is, um, none of it is private label. It, it's brand building, totally different concept. Um, or I guess not totally different, but it's a, it's a little different concept and that's what I'm going to try. And I may fall flat on my face and maybe I waste a few thousand bucks. I don't know, but I'll keep you guys posted. I, I've had my first meeting um, and I'll tell you, I'm using Diana Ratliff and her partner, Marcus, and I forget Marcus's last name, but I've, I've known Diana for a long time. So I am working with her. So if you are interested in doing the same kind of thing, go talk to Diana. Uh, if you guys are interested, maybe I can have her on the show one night. But that's, that's kind of where my mind is going. That's what I, I like doing. Private label importing from China, 
not, not for me right now. Maybe down the road, who knows? But anyway, so I'm glad you brought that back up. I did mean to touch on that and I did shout it out kind of at the end of the last show. Um, <laughs> Mike Damro says, yes, have her on. All right, I'm pretty sure I could have Diana on. She's awesome. So I'll talk to her and see if I can get her on in the next couple of weeks. But that's, that's what I'm working on. I've had my first uh, conference call with the two of them. We went over some names. They're going to do the, the their, their, uh, brainstorming names. They'll do the logo design. They'll do the website build. I mean, it, it's all in one. Uh, yes, I'm paying a lot of money for it, but they're doing everything. And trust me, if I were to do it on my own, it would not be getting done. Sometimes you have more money than you have time, and that's the situation I'm in, and I want to try something new. So that's, the, that's, that's what I'm doing. That's what, I, that's what I try to tell you guys. You know, I, I, even my coaching is not really coaching. I don't tell anyone what to do. My coaching is nothing more than this is what I'm doing. If you want to do it too, that's awesome. Please join me on the road, and we'll talk about it, and I'll do everything I can to help you, and I'll share my experience. That's it. I, I just show you guys what I do, and hopefully it inspires you to do something similar or do it even better. I love when, when my coaching clients kick my butt or people on in the Facebook group are like, Hey, that's cool that you did 30,000 in January. I did 55. I did 59. I did 51. I did 62. I don't care. Kick the crap out of me because I'm happy with, with where I'm at. And if you can do twice as, as well, it's freaking awesome. I'm happy for you. I'm not going to go, man, I can't believe I didn't keep up with him. Nah, it's not the way I work. So I'm going to share with you guys and hopefully that inspires you and drives you a little bit. Um, all right. So we've got a couple of questions that have come in and then, uh, we're going to sign off for the night, but Laura says your own website can help you get some wholesale accounts. You can't otherwise. Yes, that is actually another, uh, road that I'm going to go down. Um, uh, like some of the suppliers that has, have said, yes, you can buy our stuff, but no, you can't sell it on Amazon. Cool. I'll put it on my site. And that ties into Connie's question, which are you shipping MF if customer orders, orders come from your website? Ideally, what I'm going to do is have my website tie into my Amazon uh, inventory. And when they place an order on my website, Amazon, remember FBA stands for Fulfilled by Amazon, right? They are a fulfillment center. Yeah, essentially it's multi-channel fulfillment. Exactly, Karen. They're going to order from me. It's going to place that order through my Amazon inventory and it's going to ship to my customer. I never actually have to MF anything. That's ideally how it's going to work. Now, one of the things that I've thought about is when I have items that, you know, the, the uh, wholesaler says you can't sell on Amazon. Uh, well, how do you multi-channel fulfill then, right? You got to put it on Amazon, deactivate your listing. You can still multi-channel fulfill from a deactivated listing. So I can still send it in Amazon. I can still have it sitting there and not selling on Amazon yet able, excuse me, uh, able to have it fulfilled by Amazon, which I think is kind of cool. So if it all comes together the way I expect it to, I'm going to be very happy. And if it doesn't, then I will let you guys know that I made a huge mistake. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that, that, there you go. That's, that's it in a nutshell. Hopefully you guys got a little bit of information. You got some inspiration. Keep the ice water in the veins. The best stuff is coming in the next week. Um, anyway, <laughs> Matt says that's awesome. Yeah, thanks, Matt. <laughs> Matt, man, Matt's Matt's killing it. Anytime he says it, it's awesome, it's just like yeah, whatever. Because <laughs> you know he's just he's destroying me. Um, Amelia says your your videos are always inspiring. Good, uh, like good like with your info your awesome ideas. Thank you. Good stuff. Good luck. All right. Thank you guys. Uh, it is now nine o'clock. So yeah, hopefully I got your wheels turning. I will try to get Diana on in the next couple of weeks. I know she's always excited to talk to uh, new potential clients and even help people who may never be her client, but just to talk about her business. She loves what she does. And that's what definitely drew me to her. Thank you to the 45, 50 people that joined us live. Much appreciated. Thank you so much to all the replay watchers and listeners. I do see the views and the listens, and I cannot believe how many people are watching this stuff. It is just mind boggling and uh, very humbling. So thank you. I'll keep trying to put out good content and uh, you just keep watching and we'll see if we can make some money together. Guys, have a great night. I will see you next week. And until then, let's go make some money. Bye guys. <laughs>